problem 9. A square of area 2 is inscribed in a square of area 3, creating four congruent right triangles right, right there as shown. What is the ratio of the shorter leg to the longer leg of the shaded right triangle? So they're all right triangles. Now, what do we know about the area of a square? The area of the square, given its side length, is x squared is equal to its area. So in this case, the inner square has an area of 2. Therefore, x squared is equal to 2. Therefore, x is equal to root 2. In other words, this side length is root 2. Now, they're all congruent, so we, you know, we, I know they're all root 2. I just won't write it for the sake of convenience. Now for the outer square. The outer square, y squared is equal to 3. Therefore, y is equal to root 3. Therefore, all these side lengths are root 3. But we know that all these areas are congruent. So therefore, let's call this, for example, let's call this A. If that's A, this is A, this is A, and this is also A. So what can we say? We know that the outer shape, the outer, the outer square, must be equal to the inner square plus 4 times A, right? But what is the area to the outer square? That's 3. What is the area to the inner square? That's 2. Plus 4A, what must be A? A must be equal to 1 over 4, which means that all these areas give 1 over 4. But I don't think that's necessary, because on further inspection, we know that they gave us the idea that this is a right triangle. If they gave us the information, we should probably use it. So we should probably use the idea that they're right triangles and not the areas, but we'll just keep that to the side. Well, how do we find this side length? Well, I don't know what that is, but I do know what this is. That's root 3. So let's call this A. If that's A, that's root 3 minus A, correct? So that means they're all congruent. That means they all have the same base and the height, because the area of a right triangle is base times height divided by 2. Therefore, by this reasoning, this side must be root 3 minus A. But look at this. A, root 3 minus A, and root 2. That's a right triangle, so we can use Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus root 3 minus A squared must give root 2 squared, which is 2 right? And with this expression, we can solve for a. So let's simplify. a squared plus 3 minus 2 root 3a plus a squared gives the same thing as 2a squared minus 2 root 3a plus 3 is equal to 2, but we subtract 2 on both sides, we get plus 1 is equal to 0. Now we can solve for a via the quadratic formula, which states a is equal to 2 times the first, the largest coefficient of 2, so that's 2 times 2 is 4, and then negative b, negative b is negative of this term, so that's 2 root 3, plus minus the square root of the b term squared, which is 4 times 3, which is 12, minus 2ac, 2, um, 4ac, 4 times 2 times 1, which is 8. So that's the same thing as 2 root 3 plus minus root 4 over 4. That's the same thing as 2 root 3 plus minus 2 over 4, which is the same thing as root 3 plus minus 1 over 2. With this expression, how do we know if we take the subtraction or do we take the addition? Simple. What is root 3? Root 3 is the same thing as 1.71. Now, what is 1? 1 is just 1. So obviously, if we subtract 1, we'll get a positive number. 1.71 plus 1, we'll also get a positive number. That's all within 3. So there's, there's one way or the other, but it really doesn't matter which way we choose it. Because if we chose, for example, root 3 plus 1, let's just use root 3 plus 1 over 2 to be equal to a. We are trying to find the ratio, the ratio of the shorter leg to the long, uh, the ratio of the shorter leg to the longer leg. So that means we are trying to find the ratio of root 3 minus a over a. If we chose this to be a, this becomes 2 over root 3 plus 1 times um, root 3, so root 3 minus a, right? So root 3 minus root 3 plus 1 over 2 will give me 2, that's in the denominator, root 3 minus 1, times root 3 minus 1 over 2. 2 and 2 cancels, we get root 3 minus 1 over root 3 plus 1. Multiply by the conjugate, root 3 minus 1, root 3 minus 1. In the denominator, that becomes 3 minus 1, which is 2. In the numerator, 3 minus 2 root 3 plus 1 gives 4 minus 2 root 3 over 2, which gives 2 minus root 3, which is your final answer. But let's suppose, let's suppose that we chose the other condition. Now, the answer is C, but let's just suppose that we, you know, on the test, you said, what if it's negative? What if I chose root 3 minus 1 over 2? Well, let's see what happens. If it's root 3 minus 1, we're still trying to find the same ratio. The ratio has never changed, which is root 3 minus A over A. But A just now becomes root 3 minus 1 over 2. So that becomes what? That becomes root 3 minus root 3 minus 1. So that's 2, and that becomes plus 1. So this becomes what? This becomes root 3 plus 1 over 2 times 2 over root 3 minus 1, which is root 3 plus 1 over root 3 minus 1. Multiply by the conjugate, you get... 3 minus 1, and the central multiplied by the conjugate, that becomes 3 plus 2 root 3 plus 1, which gives you 4 plus 2 root 3 over 2, which means we get 2 plus root 3 as our answer. So we have two possible answers, but notice that we do not have 2 plus root 3 as an answer choice within the selection. Therefore, C must be our correct answer.